This time on Mel's Mountain Garage, I'm going to work on mounting this GM smog pump on the bottom of the Buick. It's going to be my electric crankcase evac pump for the turbo Buick here. It'll probably only pull an inch or two, maybe three if I'm lucky, of vacuum. But the important thing is it'll keep my rocker valve covers, my rock, you know, my rocker covers from getting coated with oil and it leaks down to the downpipe on the bell house and all over the ground. There's a saying with turbo Buicks, if it ain't leaking oil, then it's out of oil. Well, I mean, it's funny and everything, but there is ways to alleviate that. This engine's got all new gaskets, all new seals, and it didn't, it, it, the seals don't leak, right? But you can see on the valve covers, there's a film of oil everywhere coming out of the breathers. So we'll flip the camera around and I'll show you. I picked up a harness for this pump from Racetronics. Uh, Racetronics has got a lot of awesome stuff. I was just to check them out, the tech support's great. And I wanna mount the harness. I need to pull some stuff out to get the harness mounted in there. So for now at least, I wanna make a template for this pump. I'm gonna mount it under the fender and I need to run the harness. So for this vacuum pump, I'm gonna remove the driver's side oil fill hole breather when I go to change the oil, I'm obviously going to have to pull the AN fitting out and remove the line to put oil in it, but it's an inconvenience, but for as often as the car is driven, it's fine, but there's, there's a film of oil. And it runs down the fins, down the back of the block, and leaks everywhere. Over on the passenger side valve cover behind the turbo, there's another breather, and it also has an oil film. And then I already mounted these catch cans. That'll be in another video. Check out that video. It might be linked on top or in the bottom. And then that three-port catch can, the outer two are the inlets. So one will go, the left port you see will go to this breather. The right port you see will go to that breather. And the center port, will run along probably along here and then down under there to under the fender and mount the pump right up under there I will run the exhaust from the pump down a frame rail the cars had a frame off restoration and the inner frame rails are all coated with Eastwood's internal frame rail coating if I get some oil mist under there, which I really shouldn't with the catch can, it'll be okay. If anything, it'll help prevent rust. Let me get you guys over to the fittings. Here, these came from Full Throttle. Mecco Motorsports make them. This is the twist on. You see the tabs, there's no ring. It's a dash 12 AN. Then this one here has got our regular breather bushing. It's kind of push on, but under there it's actually threaded. So it should fit pretty nice. I have my harness from Racetronics. Everything's weather packed, shrink wrapped, nice connections. There's the relay. I have my hop switch, which I was talking about. I have a 72 inch harness to go from the hop switch to the interface harness. And what that does is that hop switch right now I have is a four PSI hop switch. I probably should have got a seven after doing some research, but under boost four, seven, whatever you said of that, that electric evac pump will come on and It'll help alleviate the crankcase pressure in the engine. Before I get too far, since this Rad support is powder coated and everything. I need to ensure that I actually got a good ground. 
So you can see this plug here has got its black wire and it runs to that ground stud. So I'm gonna do a continuity check and see what my resistance is between there and the negative post of the battery, just to ensure that I've got a good ground. Well, I've got my Home Depot brand meter, my flukes over my dad's house, but you see I've got it on ohms. Got my leads, I have the one lead to the negative of the pump. I'll hit the battery terminal. And there it is. After a bit of running, the wire harness is installed. The main harness will come here from the power lug. And it kind of loops around, kind of hidden under there, along the split loom where the headlight harness goes. I mean, this is a fuel injected car and it's got a lot of custom wiring, so there is a lot of wire. It runs on the bottom side of the radiator support along with the factory harness, loops around. You can see the relay, the ground's down there, and the harness runs. The pigtail for the motor runs under the fender. Here is the vacuum pump, or the air pump, but it's gonna be a vacuum pump. That's the inside. I've already taken it apart and pulled the foam filter out of it and whatnot. Here's the little adapter harness from Racetronics. I may actually lose this connector right here because you see it's like it, it is an adapter harness i may just lose it all together and and make a splice it's just one that's less connector to worry about after hemming it home with what i was going to do with the hop switch for the harness i decided to not tap in like drill and tap into the intake at all there are plenty of vacuum lines on this car that i can certainly tee into hop switch is a bit unwieldy it's got a half inch or I'm sorry, an eighth inch NPT male thread on it when a lot of the vacuum lines are just real tiny. So with where the harness is at, I chose to just make a bracket, drill a hole, tap it with an eighth, eighth inch NPT thread and then thread it into there. See it right there on a, on a stock location in the core. There's a bracket, there's the hop switch. I mean, you can see the hop switch right there. Once I'm sure it all works and I'm happy with how everything is functioning, I'll possibly shorten the harness and, and you know really get it up in there real nice. But right now it's it's good enough. I did make a template for my evac pump. Used a <laughs> a whole case of beer can box. I did make a cardboard template. Here are the cardboard template pieces for mounting the pump and the pump will mount on the bumper bolts on the aluminum solid bumper mounts that I made. This here will be the inlet and what I want to do, I'll have a straight one, but that's a 3 8 MPT thread and I want to do 3 8 MPT to dash 10. So I've got a 3 8 MPT tap. I'll tap these hopefully without breaking them just enough to thread a 3 8 MPT fitting in there, and then I can put some epoxy. Well, I learned after I had a little bit of a crack, I just put a clamp on there, ran my MPT tap through there, and was able to finish getting some threads in there. In the end, when I put that straight one on there, I'll wrap a bit of safety wire. I've got some stainless safety wire, and I'll wrap it right around that lip while I'm threading it in to keep it from splitting with some epoxy or thread sealant. Get it in there pretty snug. And overall, I'll put a piece of heat shrink on it. And that is the inlet. I, you don't want it to suck any air because this pump's only gonna pull two or three inches of vacuum anyhow. This is the outlet. So it doesn't have to be terribly tight or anything. But I'll do the same thing for consistency. I'll wrap a piece of sta stainless safety wire to protect it from splitting, then a piece of heat shrink and a piece of hose from this will just run down in our frame rail. That'll be the exhaust. But that kind of solves my problem with adapting an AN hose to it. And it'll work out just fine.
After a bit of work, got the pieces cut out of aluminum. I had to use a mixture of my drill, my wizard, another wizard. Uh, I did use my Dremel for some of the smaller cuts there. My body saw wouldn't quite fit in there. I also used my cutoff wheel for the longer cuts. And uh, that's a 180 grit pad right there on my, on my DA. And just kind of got the finish off it and all that other bull scrap and the, and the shiny stuff. So I'll clean it down with some acetone right before I weld it. But I am going to use these pieces here as scraps to go on ahead and set up the TIG. Trying to get it going. The bracket is TIG welded together. I zoom in, but the uh, welds aren't very awesome, but they're stuck together. You know, aluminum, maybe they're magnetized, but it is together. I haven't welded aluminum in, in at least two years. I haven't taken a good year and a half. Aluminum has been at least two years, maybe three. There is my Eastwood TIG 200, the ACDC when they first came out with them. They're all the stuff's black now, so I've had this for quite some time. For what that's gonna be for, and what it's gonna hold, is gonna be perfectly fine. I'm content, I'm gonna, I'll finish cleaning it up, uh, clean up the edges, like right there, like that edge isn't, I'll shave that off and, and round it all off and make good so it mounts up there and, and dust it with some semi-gloss black. Sitting around hanging out, got finished. Dusting some semi-gloss black paint on the bracket. The crankcase evac pump is in there. I forgot to put the anti-seize on there though, so I'll, I'll redo that, but you can kind of see how the, it's like a module now. Like I can mount it in, unbolt it. Got Jerry over here cheering me on. He's my cheerleader. He looks good in the skirt. And a thong. <laughs> this is kind of the best I can do because I'm on the floor, but you can see the bumper brackets here. Aluminum bumper support. That's the bumper bracket I had made way back when. See how I just got a double nut. It's not tight. The harness kind of loops around. This is the harness from the relay. This harness here I'll shorten eventually. This is from the hob switch. For now, just for proof of concept to make sure it works, I'm just going to tie it up out of the way. And if all goes well and the location of the hops, which is good and I like it, I'll shorten it up. Because that's just a two-pin weather pack connector on the one side. And you can see through the bumper holes. You can see the pump. Evac pump is pulled back out. Got the 10 and 3.8 MVT fittings in there. Safety wire is just to keep the plastic from splitting, and I'm going to put heat shrink on it and keep it all sealed up. This heat shrink has got adhesive in it, so it should help seal up any air leaks. Do as best as we can to only pull a few inches of vacuum on this pump. Hi, Jules. It's my youngest daughter. So we'll mount it back in. I have this adapter harness on here from Acetronics. I'm gonna pull that off. I bought some uh, 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 GM Metro Don't Pack 280s. So. <laughs> <care of you. laughs> My middle daughter. Metro Pack 280 pins. So I'll cut the harness and get rid of that adapter and just go right onto that plug right, right there. Here are all those Metropack 280s, so I can redo that adapter. Well, I'll get rid of the adapter harness and just put the correct plug on the end of the extension, since this is the plug, the pump that I'm going to be running. And if in the future I ever change the pump, I would have needed an adapter harness anyway, and I won't do that. I'll just recrimp it or change the end. No biggie. All right, I lobbed off this connector. From this adapter harness, use my crimpers, 
recrimp some ends on. So now this will go right to the pump without a additional connection in it. You see where I cut it off. Here you can see that catch can. Three ports. Left port goes to the passenger side valve cover. Right port goes to the driver side valve cover. Center port kind of runs down up under the fender. Down up under that battery is where the evac pump is. That rear catch can runs into the vacuum block, into the line, use some fuel injection clamps, A, because they're stronger, and B, the worm drive clamps kind of look like shit. So it's all done up. I need to get figure out a way to get rid of that white. If anybody knows, leave something in the comments because they don't match. Uh, the catch cans are in there. The hop switch was a bracket that I fabricated. You guys saw that. It's mounted to the PTE stock location intercooler. Work out real well. The only downside with the whole system is when I go to change the oil, I will need to crack that fitting loose, pull the hose off, pull the thing out of the valve car to put oil in the engine. If I had some more time and the paint or powder coat that I did the rocker covers and the upper plenum and all wet. I would TIG weld those fittings on somewhere else and leave it so I can put a regular oil cap on there. But I don't have it. There are some future goals for this. I still got interior to do yet. I've still got the nitrous purge line that I want to run from the nitrous purge solenoid. They will eventually come out of these vents. I want to have a video here where I'm making these, gr these grills. Again, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave some comments. I'd love to get my subscription count up and whatnot. Check out my Instagram. The link is in the description. It should be on my homepage. I post videos all the time, whether it's the mountain garage here with the deuce coupe and a wagon or maybe the Dodge muscle truck. That video's got a lot of views or my brother's place with his 55 Chevy, my dad's place with his you know, 56 Bel Air, 57 Ford. So thanks for checking out Mel's Mountain Garage. Thanks for checking out my video. I appreciate it.